Okay, so I've grabbed this new antenna off of Amazon. It's for 868 megahertz. So here's the antenna, it's a nice little size. It's got a little super aerial on there. Got an end connector on the bottom, which is standard for sort of UHF and SHF stuff. Um, this is meant to have about 8 dBi of gain as well, so that's pretty cool. Got some low loss coax in there, I don't know if I believe that because it's quite thin. Um, I'll be putting LMR400 on it. I take it that's like the mounting hardware in there as well. And you've got a little instruction book in there, HNT Hotspot Miner. So this was about 20 British pounds, I've got to be careful about saying pounds because people think it's weight. So, the reason why I've got this antenna guys, is I want to start exploring around the 868 megahertz area. So, let's get this antenna up in the loft. That's going to be the quickest, easiest way for me to get this up in the air somewhere high. And let's get it plugged into the SDR and see what we can find. So, as I say, I'm not going to bother using the coats that came in the kit. I'm going to use some LMR400 that I've got. Guys, at this frequency, every meter matters. So you've really got to make sure you've got high quality coax. Otherwise, your signals are just going to get lost on the way down from the antenna. So I've got enough here to get from the loft, a nice high point, down into this shack. And then I can um, connect whatever radio I want to it. So let's get this up in the loft. Right, so that was super easy. I've just screwed it to that beam up there. I've, I've made sure that the top of it isn't touching that top beam. But it's up there, and I've got a little adapter at the bottom because the coax had different connectors on just there. So yeah, that should be fine. And I've rooted the cable down into the shack. So you can see it's coming out the ceiling there. I'll get some conduit to cover all this up. And I've just rooted it behind all of this so it can go where the computer is. So it comes over to my desk through this little patch lead and into my Hack RF, which is just the most amazing SDR receiver. And I'm hosting my SDR software on this little mini PC, which runs Windows 11. ARM version. Right then, this is exciting. I love testing out new antennas. Actually, before we fire up the SDR software, we should check the SWR on a tiny VNA, just to double check the antennas performing correctly. So, tiny VNA is connected, and you can see at 868 bang on the nail, the SWR is actually 1.1. Um, yeah, interesting, and it sort of climbs a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm still learning about sort of these sort of antennas with gain. Um, you know, the way you're getting this kind of like fluctuation and the higher frequencies. So, um, yeah, guys, any any info in the comments would be helpful. Why are we seeing this kind of wave up and down here like that? I'd be interested to know. Right, guys, here we go. So I'm using AirSpy. As my SDR software, there's loads of videos online about AirSpy and how to set these things up. But look, you can see already, look, there's loads of little kind of signals pulsing um, in that band. Look, look at this big one here. What on earth are all these things? Now, I'm aware that there's like smart meters and sort of telemetry and stuff in this band. Um, this is like an ISM band, so it's it's pretty much kind of anything goes. But also, I know LoRa and LoRaWAN um, is in this frequency range as well. So it'd be interesting to see if we can actually see any of that because um, I've not seen one of those signals yet. Um, you know, we've got some pulses here. It's difficult to, what's this? Another one's just come up there. It's so fascinating, isn't it, guys? Like, what's out there just kind of buzzing away and we don't even realise it. You know, there's all these little pulses just coming. There's like almost like three things in one place there um, on one part of the spectrum. Things like this as well, where there's obviously like a distant signal and then maybe like this one here is like a reply to it. Um, you know, there's multiple things happening. It's so interesting. So I've just turned the audio on, just unmuted the audio because it can get a bit annoying. Um, and just looking at this signal here, which is super strong, 869500. I thought that was like a lower WAN gateway frequency. Listen, you can hear the data. Let's try and turn it up a little bit. It's like frequency shift keying or something. Sun's gone down now and I'm still sitting here looking at this. Just like, well, it's fascinating all the different signals that are popping up. Look at this one. It's another new one that's just popped up. Um, it wasn't there a minute ago, and now it's just appeared from somewhere. A minute ago, it was actually really strong. It was almost like bleeding over, like loads either side. So it must have been really close. So I've just sort of zoomed in now, look, and you can actually see like the data pulses basically going. It's like frequency shift keying going from left to right. I've narrowed the filter right down as well. So you can sort of hear the two tones. It's a bit like Ritty, if you're familiar with that. It's that sort of vibe, but this one's like super strong. And then look, what's happening there? There's something really nearby. I haven't seen or heard any lower signals yet, so that's quite interesting because I thought this band would be full of them. Um, 
with regard to the lady then. Thank you. Can we do that all again? Yes. So that was pretty unexpected. It's amazing what you can find. When I first heard the signals, I thought, oh, you know, there's lots of voices. What could this be? Um, it, I know that it's kind of up around the radio mic frequencies, but there's not really any studios that near to me. And these radio mic systems, they don't put out a lot of power. Um, it quickly became obvious that obviously it was some sort of radio mic or talkback or monitoring system because, you know, you could actually hear like the, the action cut and some of the actors reading their lines and then saying, oh, no, I want to do it again. So absolutely unbelievable that this antenna is picking that up. And I wanted to try and find out where it's coming from. So if we have a look at this Ofcom document here, Ofcom basically managed the spectrum um, in the UK. It's like a sort of government body thing. But basically, yeah, if we go through the document here, there should be a list of frequencies which tell you um, what's actually allocated to those um, frequencies. So this is, this is a license free band. So this is sort of telling you what is most likely to be there. So 868 megahertz is like a license free band band which covers lots of different things like you know telemetry as we've seen and sort of short range devices srds so if we look at this bit here 863 megahertz that is where i've heard this so it's around that area analog audio applications other than voice are excluded so you can see from this here you probably would expect to find like radio mics around this sort of frequency range now what's interesting here is the power output is 25 milliwatts erp um, and I'm obviously receiving this. I'm nowhere near <laughs> any studios. Not that I know of. I mean, I could be. It, it could be. But this setup sounded pretty professional. So, so just thinking about studios that are near me, the first one that sprung to mind was Elstree Studios. Now, that is about 19 kilometres away. That's a long way. And if you sort of look at that terrain plot, there's loads and loads of hills and stuff in between me and that studio. So I wouldn't have thought that a signal at 25 milliwatts, you know, if it's a legal signal, um, is going to be kind of penetrating that lot and getting getting across to me, unless there's sort of some sort of freak lift conditions on, which then it could it could actually you know go many 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 miles. Um, but I'm going to rule that out first of all because the second studio that's a bit nearer to me, which is Hoddesdon Studios, now that's only eight kilometres away, and you can see yeah again there's a massive great hill, a set of hills in between me and that, so it's probably unlikely, but. Yeah, where is this actually coming from? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? I mean, I'm almost like in a rural position here um, at this location. So yeah, unless it's in the sort of nearby town, I don't know. Now, the other thing we shouldn't rule out is lift conditions. You could get a lift on uh, these high frequencies. It can happen, um, which will mean that your, the signal will actually travel a lot further than it would past line of sight, basically. So that's a possibility. Although some of this footage was a couple of days ago, I actually heard it on the next night but I haven't heard it since. But of course that could be down to filming schedules. You just don't know. Anyway, for now, we'll have to leave that as a bit of an unsolved mystery signal. So cool, isn't it? Anyway, for those of you without SDR receivers that might be playing around with the Quan Sheng at the moment, you might be wondering, can the little Quan Sheng pick up those signals as well? Well, from my experience, it is actually quite deaf up there. It doesn't really hear a lot. Um, the, the receiver is not very sensitive up at those frequencies. You can use a little preamp like this. I'll grab one of these from Amazon. I've got like a camera battery on the back of it just to power it. They run on about five volts. They do kind of work with the Quan Sheng, but you've got to be careful because it kind of like overload the front end a bit and it might start just in stuff um, but you can improve the reception on the higher frequencies with a little preamp like that but you are going to bring up the noise level as well but it's something to play around with and that's a little 868 megahertz antenna the great thing about 868 megahertz as well is it's where all the helium miners are you know all of that craze when that kicked off there's loads of antennas all over amazon and ebay that you can grab that will work for this that's basically what i did here just grabbed the helium miner antenna and it just works so well it's unbelievable really anyway the next thing i want to do is mess around with a thing called Mesh-tastic, which are like little lower transceivers and you can kind of communicate um, off-grid you know from point to point and in a, in a mesh so i want to find out if there's anyone else out there messing around with mesh tastic i mean the lower signals travel miles and miles and miles with proper antenna setup so those adventures will be coming up next on the channel anyway guys hope you've enjoyed this one i'll catch you next time